just to draw members' attention to the fact that at 2.30 uh, p.m. today, building users will be invited to observe one minute silence to remember the victims of the Manchester Arena concert attack, which took place one year ago. I will ask those in the chamber to join me in observing this silence when we reach 2.30 p.m. Now, the next item of business is consideration of business motion 12379 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Bureau, setting out a revised business programme for today and Thursday. Uh, if anyone objects, please say so now. I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move the motion. Formally moved. Thank you very much. No one seems to object. The question, therefore, is that motion 12379 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We turn now to the next item of business, which is topical questions, and one question today from Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether its new drug strategy will seek to support rather than penalise people in possession and, and intending to personally use small amounts of drugs. Minister Aileen Campbell. Thank you. Uh, the new strategy will prioritise the health needs of those in our society harmed by their substance use while working with Police Scotland and others to use the law against those who seek to profit from that. There are a number of outcomes available to the police, prosecutors and the courts to avoid where appropriate penalisation. These outcomes include recorded police warnings, diversion from prosecution and rehabilitative uh, court orders such as drug treatment and testing orders. Prosecution decisions are, of course, for independent prosecutors and sentencing decisions are a matter for the independent courts. However, the law here is reserved under the Misuse of Drugs Act, but though these available outcomes reflect the fact that it's not often in the public, always in the public interest to punish. To be clear, the Scottish Government wants to prevent the harm that comes from people using drugs, adopting a public health approach to tackle the challenges Scotland faces and being innovative in our solutions, irrespective of whether they may seem initially controversial or unpopular. And that's why I'll be meeting with the UK Government to discuss primarily Glasgow's efforts to establish a supervised injecting facility, along with wider issues around the Misuse of Drugs Act. Liam MacArthur. I thank the Minister for that response. Dr Roy Robertson was right to say it's time to, quote, support rather than penalise people who misuse drugs. The police agree. It's senseless to send someone caught in possession of drugs for their own personal use to prison. Figures I recently acquired through a parliamentary question showed that still happens in over 200 occasions a year. Thousands more are handed fines. What is the point of sending people whose only crime is misusing drugs to somewhere such as HMP Addywell, where one study showed half of those released tested positive for illegal drugs? Does the Minister agree, and will the Scottish Government's strategy implement a shift to treatment and education? Minister. Yep, I, am, I absolutely appreciate the way in which Liam MacArthur has articulated uh, the issue, and absolutely we value very much the comments um, from Roy around uh, his, uh, and his and his role on our PADS uh, group. He provides a lot of uh, advice to us uh, in developing our policies around this issue. Of course, we are uh, refreshing our drug uh, and alcohol strategy. It'll be a new strategy, and absolutely will recognise that for many people who have addiction problems, that it doesn't necessarily mean that they should be punished for that in a, and penalised uh, through the court processes. There is a requirement to recognise the holistic needs of people who require help and support around the isolation they may feel, the trauma that they've experienced in their lives, and also a whole, whole host of other issues that require uh, tackling. So uh, absolutely, the, the points more generally that Liam MacArthur uh, articulates absolutely will uh, take us forward uh, through and be seen through our new uh, strategy approach. Liam MacArthur. Can I again thank the Minister for that response. She re uh, refers to the uh, strategy agreed uh, as part of the budget deal with the Conservatives back in 2008. Since then, we've seen drug-related deaths at a record high, drug-related hospitaliz hospitalisations up 50% over the last uh, decade. There are alternatives to imprisoning people. Uh, ministers could have done more uh, before now. The motivation for backing drug reform should be the tsunami in drug-related harm in Scotland. And will the government, therefore, um, but it has the powers and flexibility uh, to avoid reform stalling because of an argument about powers with Mes Westminster, will the minister seek uh, and publish independent legal advice on just how far they can go uh, towards the radical for reform we need to see? Minister. Uh, again, thank you for the, uh, the supplementaries. Uh, the 
rise in drug deaths absolutely is something that we need to tackle head on. That's why in my initial response to uh, Liam MacArthur, I said, you know, we need to be innovative in our solutions, even if they may seem to be or be seen to be controversial or unpopular uh, initially, because it's not uh, tolerable to see the drug death total rise. There is, though, however, uh, an issue around understanding that group of people who have been using uh, drugs for a number of years, who have complexity in their lives and chaos in their lives. And we need to understand that and we need to uh, uh, understand that and help uh, treat and cope and support uh, those people uh, as best as we can. That's why we are refreshing our drug uh, strategy. It is also a trend that has been seen since the 1990s. It's been growing because of that ageing cohort of people who are using drugs and the and recognition on the number of years that they have been uh, using uh, drugs. So that has a trend that's happened since the 1990s. The programme for government also uh, committed an extra £20 million uh, to ensure that we can be innovative in our approach to tackling uh, drug uh, addiction in Scotland and to make sure that we can embed that public health approach that we need to see happening uh, across uh, the country. But we can't get away from the fact that the Misuse of Drugs Act is reserved and that we don't have the powers to do all of the things that I think uh, we would like to do here a lion's share of the parliamentary parliamentarians in the par uh, here want to do, such as the Glasgow's proposals. Uh, and it's not just a convenient thing for us to get out and duck out of tackling this head on. We want to do what we can. And that is why I'm seeking to engage with the uh, UK government to find out just what flexibility they're willing to offer. But if they don't offer that flexibility, then we'll have to ask them to, to devolve the powers to us here uh, in Scotland. Thank you, Minister. Uh, these were three questions and three quite long answers. We've got seven other supplementaries in this. I'd like to get them all in if we can, but we're going to stop at 14.18 to move on to the statement. So we try and be quite quick with these. Liam Kerr, please. Thank you, President Officer. Liam MacArthur refers to Dr Robertson's recommendation that people caught with a small amount of illegal substances should no longer be prosecuted. Illegal drug use is causing real harm to people and is a blight on our communities. And the answer to that problem is not a soft-touch approach. A potential dealer and user must know they could face a criminal penalty for their actions. So will the Minister take this opportunity to say to communities, to families, to law-abiding citizens that she will rule out this proposal and instead focus on helping drug users abstain from using in the first place? Minister. To be uh, quite uh, short in my response, des describing the situation, describing our approach as soft touch absolutely Sorry, misses no. the point, totally misses the point and what we're trying, totally misses the approaches that we're trying to take to help these vulnerable people to cope better with their addiction. And I said in my initial to answer to Liam MacArthur that while we'll be seeking to prioritise the health needs of those in our society harmed by their substance use, we will continue to work with Police Scotland to use the law against those who seek to profit from it. Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I start by saying that Labour agrees with the broad intent of the Scottish Government in terms of the change of emphasis from criminal justice to health for drugs. But to echo Liam MacArthur's point, the Government is keen to stress the, the areas that are out with their control and their powers. But can I ask what consideration has been given by the Government and those powers they do have, for example, around police policy and practice and the role of the Crown Office? Uh, in terms of changing that emphasis from criminal justice to health, because those are areas that could have a real impact and they do have control over. Minister. We have um, a strong police presence on our uh, PADS group uh, as well. So we absolutely explore what we can and how we can use the police and a whole host of other partners to help us deal far more effectively with those who are experiencing uh, substance use challenges in their lives. I do, though, think it comes back to the point that we can't ignore that the Misuse of Drugs Act is reserved. And it was something that I don't think any party here called for to be devolved in the Smith Commission. If I'm wrong, then absolutely, uh, I, I'll, I'll be happily to be proven wrong, wrong. But we need the powers of the Misuse of Drugs Act here to do some of the innovative things that I think that people want us to proceed with. And of course, though, within the powers that we have, we'll absolutely explore everything. And I said in my answer to Lee MacArthur, even if those do seem to be unpopular or uncontroversial, we'll explore everything because we have a challenge here that needs to be met with public health answers. Christine Graham to be followed by Anas Sarwar. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm sure the Minister, like me, would dis differentiate between legalising and decriminalising. 
and on decriminalising for possession of a small quantity of drugs. I hear what the Minister has to say about Misuse of Drugs Act, but I'd like to ask if the government would pursue whether this could be implemented by the Crown as a policy. For example, decriminalising the, de decriminalising the use of cannabis for the alleviation of pain. Minister. Um, I happily get back, for time pressure, happily to get back to uh, Christine Graham on some of the issues she raised around pain management. Of course, there is ongoing discussions that I have, uh, that the Cabinet Secretary has been having with a number of those that have had constituency interests around the alleviation you can get from, uh, for pain from uh, drugs that may be at the moment uh, classed as uh, illegal. But actually, there is uh, a whole host of uh, other ways in which we can progress some of that through the uh, uh, systems that are there to uh, enable uh, drugs to come online to enable people to get uh, the help and support for their conditions. Uh, as I have said though, however, to, in my previous answer to Liam MacArthur, there are a number of alternative outcomes available to, to prosecutors because we recognise it's not always in the best interest, the public interest, to punish. And again, I'll reiterate that the main uh, broad, broad thrust of our approach in our new drug and alcohol strategy is to tra tackle the challenges that we face in a public health uh, manner. And I saw our to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. As part of the change of emphasis to health rather than criminal justice, the Health, Secretary, health Minister will have seen news reports today that suggest that those addicted to drugs are waiting weeks for appointments, so technically within the target, but are then waiting up to six months for treatment. Will the Minister commit to look into these shocking waiting times and ensure that those who need help, and particularly those who are actively seeking help, are not waiting months to begin their treatment? Minister. So the target around the, um, and uh, that was established uh, fairly recently, uh, has been one of the successes around the current strategy. However, we absolutely understand that there's more that needs to be done, and that's why there's the, with the 20 million that's been pledged through the programme for government. We'll be able to ensure that we can uh, make that a uh, medical response uh, as appropriate and as timely to help these people in a, who are incredibly vulnerable who cannot wait for that treatment so the, the new the opportunity we have is through the new uh, strategy and we have also commissioned ISD to develop an integrated drug and alcohol information system that will also help us capture the information far more clearly and effectively John Finney to be followed by Neil Finlay. Uh, thank you, President Officer. It's simply not good enough for the Tories to trot out just say no. I, I note and, and indeed welcome the Minister's plan meeting with the UK Government, but can the Minister please outline meetings that have already taken place and detailed what was discussed with the UK Government, please? Minister. I've been attempting to meet with the UK Government for, for some time on this uh, matter. Uh, and again, you know, I will endeavour to keep the member informed as those meetings progress. We do hope to have one in the coming months uh, and uh, hope to ensure that they understand that this is not just something that we're asking for constitutional convenience, but there's absolutely a real driver here, the rising drug deaths and the fact that we need to meet the challenges, particularly faced in Glasgow through a public health response. So I'll happily keep the, uh, the member uh, informed as those meetings progress uh, to make sure that uh, they understand, the UK government understand, that we have parliamentary, largely parliamentary backing here for the, for the proposals that Glasgow want to take forward and for us to make a, a, a real uh, improvement in the way in which we tackle the challenges that are being faced in Glasgow. And Neil Finlay. Um, everybody knows that drugs policy is failing. More people are dying and the streets are awash with drugs. Will the Minister look at working across Parliament on this vital issue and would she consider coordinating a cross-party deputation with the support of health and social policy specialists to visit Portugal to see how that country has reversed uh, its appalling rates of drug deaths, infection and addiction. And will she please ignore the irresponsible stupidity of Liam Kerr? So there are a number of times that we... Minister, um, <laughs> sorry. Just be careful with uh, okay. personal attacks like that, uh, Member, please. Minister. Um, there's a number of uh, things that I broadly agree with in what Neil uh, Finlay uh, said uh, around the learning from other countries, the ability to work across Parliament. I think we've got a meeting coming up soon, so we can uh, engage with uh, Neil Finlay on the issue that I know he feels incredibly strongly about. I do think, though, it is uh, irresponsible to use the, the language that was described in uh, in uh, Liam Kerr's uh, question, because this is a, a much more nuanced, a much more uh, uh, important issue that we need to uh, ensure that we uh, 
approach this in a mature way, in a level-headed way. That's why I've engaged with uh, officials in Australia. It's why when I was recently in Dublin, I went to visit the people who are taking forward supervised injecting facilities in Dublin uh, as well, understand the challenges that they face, learn from them when they are taking forward these innovative uh, solutions. And of course, we'll look at what Portugal uh, is taking forward in, in their own uh, country. But again, you know, I, my commitment is to work across the parliament to ensure that we have cross-party where possible a consensus on our new strategy to ensure that we can deliver the best outcomes for the people of Scotland, and in particular, these people who are incredibly vulnerable. Thank you very much. That concludes uh, our